I don't know how to start these. I don't think there's a way to start these. <coughs> it's been two years. Start like that. Out. Okay, start just <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're here talking about Bullet Train, back on Jeez. Concessions Confessions. Again, the show is just kind of a random talky talk show about whatever movie we want to watch movie and watch chit chat about. Point, yeah. Yeah. So, Bullet Train, I guess. Yeah, Bullet Train. Yeah. I also give it two thumbs up. Oh, yeah. That was pretty good. good. Uh, before we get started, Charles, you have background about this. Like, the, the guy who wrote the book, right? Because it's based on a book, right? That's, that's the idea? Yeah. It was written... I have a light bit of background. Because it's... Um, it was a novel by a man named Kataru Osaka. He oh, so he is Japanese. He is Japanese. It's a completely Japanese novel. I think oh. the Japanese title is like a bug. This is the second in a series of three books he's writing. He hasn't written the third one yet. Oh, and okay. They're all, like, bug-titled. But they're all in this kind of, like, Tokyo underground criminal underworld thing so brad pitt's quirky. characters oh god sorry what right was very quirky yeah because brad pitt's character's name is ladybug is the book called ladybug or is it just called like a bug the book's called like stag beetle or something oh stag beetle so not even ladybug it's something like... but his name is so his brad pitt's character's name is nanawa N nanawa but uh -huh. people call him ladybug because he is a weak little bug who's always very unlucky okay unlucky unlucky they keep that kind of in the luckiest line. way yeah. yeah i mean he's and, unlucky in a in a weird <laughs> yeah in a technically he needs to be there unlucky kind of way uh does so the other book is what's that based around like this story is about brad pitt's character more or less what's yeah. the other book about the other book is six years before this, following a character that doesn't even show up in the movie. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the way, is it... The, the way they kind of structured it, which I... it's the, I, Normally I don't like having um, book and movie being so separate, but mm -hmm. the way they structured it is... Um, the Spoilers, in case you care. The White Death in the movie uh -huh. ki kills a criminal underworld leader called Minigishi... Mm -hmm. Minigishi is the main criminal underworld guy in the book. So that's, oh, their, okay. that's their cutting off point. Is the White Death is their villain in the movie, and Minigishi is the villain in the book the whole time. In the book that's six years prior? In the book that is this book. Oh! Yeah. Whoa, okay, hang on. So, okay. So, so <laughs> the main. Hang on, no, no, no. Explain that one again. <laughs> I'm very confused now. The yeah. main bad guy in the book is not at all in the movie. He's in the flashback. He's the guy that gets shot in the head. Oh, he's the 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 leader of yeah. of the the underground Japanese guy that the old, the grandfather character works for. Yeah, he's that. Oh, character. okay. That's their way and of separating the two stories. Is they just kill him and go. Everything's different from here. Just change it slightly. So what happens in the book then? Um, not the ending. <laughs> um, st follows the same basic plot. They still, um, Lemon and Tangerine still pick up the, the son. Uh-huh. They, uh, Nana still goes on to steal the briefcase. The wolf still gets on the train at the wrong moment. <laughs> And the Hornet still exists in the setting of the thing. The Hornet is slightly different because she's, okay. that's a repeat character from the first novel as well. Okay, so the Hornet is in the first one. I promise we'll get to context about this. I just need to get this. I'm just very <laughs> curious to know the differences. So these are all major characters that are in the book. Like they all have, so in the movie, they all have the, these code names. So we have the Wolf, the Hornet, the Prince, um, the White Death. Lemon, Tangerine, they're like a duo. So they, these are all characters and they all have code names, so to speak. Some in-universe and some... Well, no, they actually all are in-universe. In and yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, okay. Um, the only, and the only other big difference is the prince is actually a boy in the book. Oh, okay. So she wasn't even a... Okay, so the prince in the movie is a, is a female played by none other than um, Joey King. Yeah, from Joey the King. Kissing Booth one, two, and three, and um, Wish Upon. 
and wish upon and, and wish um, upon. the slender man movie the slender man movie yeah the resident <laughs> cheap horror actress uh, yeah. Z- uh it, she did okay King. it was a, it was an okay yeah 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 uh, so she plays a role that was originally a dude then yeah the huh. way they describe him and i wrote that down because it's interesting they describe the prince as not really looking masculine but more feminine oh so I'm assuming okay. a lot of those are like jokes. Like I'm gonna keep doing book spoilers. Uh, we can cut this down. Um, Lemon and Tangerine no. are the same build and look exactly the same in the book. So they do look oh. like twins. That's so they're actually twins-ish in the book. Yeah. It's okay, huh? They have a lot. Of, they did a change. lot of those are like references that they put in the movie, even though they changed them for actors. Uh huh. I mean, however they cast it, it's, I mean, it seemed to work out. Like, I didn't go, this felt weird when, when watching yeah. the movie. Like, no one, everyone fit their character pretty pretty well. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, even um, the White Deaths actor, who I can't for the life of me remember, Shape of Water guy. Yeah. Um, no, he seems who, to Or Zod. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that I was guess Zod. That was Zod. Um, forgot. So, I guess, so that's interesting. So, before we wrap up the... We would kind of move into the more movie-centered thing since this is now just book. What happens more or less in... So did he... This is the, the second book of the series, or is yeah. this second released or second chronological or both? Both. Okay, so he did write a book before uh, Bullet Train, we'll call it. Yeah. Before Bullet Train, he wrote a book that takes place chronologically six years prior. Correct. And, and that focuses around the Hornet... And other people? Yeah, it focuses on the Hornet, and there's a character that... The only crossover character in the movie would be the Hornet. Okay, so she's the only one that makes... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, does she call everyone bitch in that book as well? Or is is that a book (laughs) thing, or is that a movie thing? That's a movie thing. (laughs) That's a movie thing, okay. Because she ends, like, every sentence. Um, Okay. So, it's fun... (laughs) I forgot. I actually forgot that for some reason. I've watched this movie five times. Oh yeah, because I rewatched this last night just to double check. I remembered everything, and uh-huh. it, I forgot that she does that. She for the says two that every on screen. Yeah. For like yeah, the whole, like really brief. Oh okay, two minutes. She's on screen outside of a, a giant, f- fluffy anime character uh, or yeah. caricature. Yeah. So I remember my first exposure to this movie was on a billboard in LAX. Okay. It was, we were just like walking through security and there was bullet train. And so it was all the colorful characters in a, in like a you know, line. Cause this movie is very much about the cast. Like it's a very, it's a group cast driven movie. And the, uh, the first thing that I noticed is that Brad Pitt in the poster, and this is what weirded me out the most between the poster and the movie, he looks like this. <laughs> yeah. Very bored. Just kind yeah. of like he doesn't really want to be there. Which is so funny because in the movie, Brad Pitt, the main character, Ladybug, is a joy to watch on screen. Like, he's fun. He's energetic. He's really vibing with the piece. And I'm, yeah. it's just so weird that the posters have him slack-jawed almost. Like, there's a couple where he's like, you know, one eyebrow right. raised, but like I don't. They must have like, maybe they found like a stock image of Brad Pitt to use that's just kind of a generic Brad face, maybe. and then they just photoshopped hair on him. I don't know, because yeah, he's he's never, he's never not like interacting, being interactive, and smiling and doing stuff. Yeah, and talking. Yeah, the whole movie. He's, the whole movie. Yeah, he's. I it was one of my favorite Brad Pitt roles. I'll be honest, because uh, because it's fun. It's different. It's it's uh, different than he usually different role that he usually takes up. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last Brad Pitt movie I've seen. Obviously, Fight Club is like one of his pinnacle ones. I haven't ones. seen a lot of Brad Pitt movies. The last one I can think of, which is 13 Years a Slave, where he plays one guy like near the end and he's on screen for all of like 10 minutes. He's And then, of course, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Right. Um, Bongiorno. Bongiorno. The last... Unfortunately, I think the last Brad Pitt movie I can remember seeing would have been World War Z. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Not great. Yeah, he's no. also in that movie. Oh, um, have you seen Twelve Monkeys? No, I haven't seen Twelve Monkeys. I need. To. I wouldn't. 
I would actually not mind doing a, a con con on Twelve Monkeys because that movie's oddly good. Also, I think the the m- main character in that movie, her name is my grandmother's name, which is really oh. like Catherine Rayleigh. Like huh. full name is is the I think just full, just full name. And uh, Brad Pitt is in that movie. He plays a uh, schizophrenic, I think, and he does a really good job. Okay. Like so, I remember growing up. Brad Jelena, right? It was all, he was a very Brad Pitt was a very tabloid actor, or at least he was in tabloids all the time. Yeah. And I, for some reason, as a kid, I just thought that he was like some schmo, who was just like a, a you know how some actors unfortunately kind of fall into the the place of star, not actor. Yes. You know what I mean? Like where like they are are in movies, but they're more of a star than an actor. Like they don't they're not really good at acting or well versed in acting. Right, they're they're there for the star power, but they're not like an actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brad Pitt was one of those guys where I was when I found out that he could actually act, I was quite happy because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this guy's actually pretty good. He's okay. Oh, Troy, he's in Troy too, which I haven't seen. Oh yeah, he is in Troy. I haven't seen Troy since high school, so. Yeah. But uh, so basic premise: um, Brad Pitt, Ladybug, is. A gra- snatch and grab, co- yeah. not a con man, like a snatch and grab, a st- not even an assassin. Like you hire him to steal stuff, right? right? Basically, it's his character. Like he shows up, takes a thing, and leaves. Right. And he's filling in for a character. We'll get to that later because I, I think I know why that actor played it, that character. He's filling in for Carver, right? Yeah, Carver. Carver. He's filling in for Carver, and he has to steal a briefcase from a train. Yep. And we find out throughout the film that there are a bunch of people related to the Japanese underworld, specifically to a mob boss named the White Death, played by Zod. Yep. And, which we don't find out until the very end. He's only a, a disembodied voice. Yeah, which, they don't reveal that until literally the last 20, 30 minutes of the movie. Yeah, and you're like, oh, it's him. Yes. Uh, and so, there's all these characters, all these colorful characters, Lemon and Tangerine, who are a, a dynamic duo those are, I would say, are hitmen or assassins. Those are more like hitmen, yeah. So there's all these colorful characters on the train, this bullet train in Japan, that are related to the Japanese underground, specifically to a mob boss named the White Death, who remains a disembodied voice on a phone with Lemon and Tangerine for most of it, because Lemon and Tangerine are on there on the train with the White Death's son. Yeah. There's his, el- uh, his eldest child. Yes, his eldest child. There's some Japanese guy whose name I can't for life of me remember, who his has name, a... S- huh? His name is um, Kim- Kimimura. That's his last name. I don't remember his first Kimimura? name. Kimimura? Yeah. Kimimura is on there. He's, uh, he's taking a job. He, well, all we really know is that he, he is another underground hitman type person whose son was pushed off a... Who's like eight-year-old son? Six-year-old son? No. Yeah. Ten, right around there? Somewhere it was pushed there. off of a roof. Somehow survived... Um, and, and is in the like ICU, who's in a yeah. coma, yeah. And he's on the train for some reason, because he's there doing a job. There's a lady in pink who are introduced to as the prince, Joey King. Yeah. Uh, and she's on there for mysterious reasons. And I think that's all of them, except for the Hornet, which, which has hidden. been on the train the entire time, costumed yeah. as, or disguised as a, in a big, like, what would you call that? It's a, a ma- it's like a mascot ma- mascot yeah like a mascot costume yeah. of a big cat anime if you, if you, thingy if you know a little bit about Japan Japan really likes its mascots for like everything I wouldn't be surprised I know it's um, it's the commercial says the number one anime in Japan it also looked like a Hello Kitty type character or like some I don't know why I imagined it was like a mascot for a popular drink but it's it's a anime apparently you could believe it though. yeah. But throughout the entire movie, you see this mascot character interacting with people on the train. And at one point, when Brad Pitt's character is walking with a briefcase, runs into it, and the, the, the thing tries to take the briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. There's a very violent film. It's a very Not a bad film, but a very this violent This was film. directed by the guy that did um, the John Wick series of films. 
oh, the John Wick guy did that. That makes way more sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes everything make way more sense. I did like z- almost zero research on this because I, th- I knew you were going to come in with a bunch of stuff. So I was like, I'm just going to let him him do all of it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was that. That makes way more sense. It was that director and that kind of development group. So it's like, oh, I can see okay. where all of the action and violence came from. Funny enough, the uh, stunt... Uh, the stunt organization that Anya is practicing with, or is training with, they're the stunt group that did the stunts for this film. And the production company. Oh. The production company. 87, 87 North. 87 North, yeah. Yeah, so she's training with the folks that also did this movie. I was trying to look into them because their logo um, has like the Zhao Zhao stickmen on it, and I'm like, is that, are they related to... Okay, 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 thank you so much for... <laughs> okay, the first thing when I saw their logo pop up, I thought immediately is the Zhao Zhao stick figure guys from Albino Black Sheep. Okay, I'm so glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, I'm like, wait a second. Either it's a nod, or they just happen to do like an accidental right? nod. Because I can't like, I that look... find any information on that, and so it just, no. could just be a reference. But... Right? Because... Th- those two stick figures, specifically the way they looked, looked like the Zhao Zhao ones. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay, I'm, I feel vindicated now a bit. Uh, <laughs> so what, something that the the movie got me, kind of, I want to say enthralled, but what's captivated. So the movie is captivating because it does a lot of, what? Why is that? What? Hang, why is it there? Why is it there? Why is it there? And so it kind of like lays these little clues and these little things and they don't tell you the full picture till basically the very end basically the very end and it's kind of yeah the novel follows similarly where they don't tell you what's going on you follow every character individually like the Mm -hmm. movie but they don't Mm -hmm. explain it until you get to a point where they're like well now you need to know what's going on yeah it's like okay we've dragged you on long enough let's actually discuss what's going on (laughs) let's actually tell you what's going on (laughs) Uh, that's that movie definitely did that, but it's not it's not a bad thing. It's just another, it's the way it tells its story. Yeah, it's and a good discovery something... kind of thriller. Like, what, yeah, what's which, going it's, on? What is it? it? Exactly. Who are like? Why are Lemon and Tangerine doing this case? Why are you know, why is this? Why does the son get killed because the White Death son that they have gets killed and all that? I guess character by character we can kind of break down what they're all there for because in the we don't find any of this out until basically the very end when the White Death spills everything so right i know we've done spoiler the the whole point of this is to not worry about spoilers but if you really don't want about sto- spoilers this is this is the movie yeah so leave now so for, yeah. deal with it. <laughs> essentially and help me if i get this wrong yep, yep. the white death zod yep. his he is a he took over a japanese criminal empire right yeah and he yes. killed a guy he killed and, the leader of the Japanese criminal empire to just take it over. Right, to be ambitious. And he, uh, very much a, uh, a guy who is kind of a chaotic criminal organization. You know, I like to tempt fate kind of guy because he's doing Russian roulette with himself right before he kills the, the Japanese guy because he rings the, rings the um, what is it called? The oh, thing the that spins? Cylinder. cylinder. I think it's cylinder. He's got a pistol, a pistol, yeah. uh, a revolver. A revolver. And he he r- spins it on his arm. It down his arm. Yep, clicks it to his head, and then nothing happens. Rolls it on his arm, and then point blanks the Japanese dude. Years later, his s- crappy son is in prison again. Yeah. His wife, he he was supposed to go pick up his son, but his organization had a hit. By Lemon and Tangerine, yep. They like what twenty bodies in it, they're being basically being wood chippered, like, ground into it. Yeah, yeah. They, they went pulled to Bolivia a, and killed like all of his criminal empire. All of his goods, yeah, yeah. They uh, Fargoed all those bodies. <laughs> yeah, they, far, they Fargoed all of them. So his team had a Fargo incident, so he had to go deal with that. So his wife went to go pick up his son, and she's like, it's the last time, I swear, it's the last time we'll bail him out. And then on the way over, a hitman that was supposed to be targeting the White Death hit his wife instead. Yep. Who, Carver. Carver. And... And then, ha- by didn't, happenstance... <laughs> didn't kill his wife, though. Yeah. Because there's a piece of metal in... impaled into her heart, or, like, pressure, putting pressure on her heart, and yeah. the, the leading cardiologist was supposed to save her life 
and that by happen chance, right, is yeah, is when that by the hornet happenstance, the hornet poisons his instruments, tools? which causes him yeah. to die. Right, but two nights before, which caused her to die. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah, is did they explain why she was she attacked the surgeon? I don't think no, so. No. Or is it just no. another hit? It was, it was just, just another hit. hit. They just, she's okay. Went, she's got head ca head cannon. Head cannon. The doctor has is super rich, but also has a bunch of debt. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. Why not? Something. Head yeah. cannon. Uh, <laughs> and so his wife dies because of the hornet's actions and because of Carver's actions and because of Lemon and Tangerine's actions because it was supposed to be hitting him, but because they Fargoed his crew, he had to go talk to his crew. So these four people are lined up. And by subsequent also realization. Also, his son is the original reason. Because exactly. if he wasn't in jail, none of it would have happened. If his son wasn't in jail, yeah, yeah, none of that, they, that opportunity wouldn't have happened at all. So that's five people. That's everybody, right? Yeah, everybody other than Ladybug, who's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so those five people are on a train. Oh, he also, like, what is it? He gets, he has his, he has his son kidnapped yeah right and then he sends in lemon and Tan he hires lemon and tangerine yeah. to go t get his son back and the ransom money and that ransom money was supposed to be payment to the hornet, the hornet. this gets very yeah like it's, the, it's i'm telling you this this is that has a lot of things going around so kimura delivered the ransom money to lemon and tangerine <sighs> that's right and then they went to get the son, and then when they got him on the train, the ransom money was promised to the Hornet, but Ladybug was Horn also hired to steal the ransom money as well. Right, and the Hornet was supposed to get the ransom money because the Hornet was hired by the White Death to, to kill, kill his, his son. son. Yeah. And why did... So, and then... Oh, that's right. And the reason why... Because you were saying Ladybug was on there was to get the money... Yeah. The original intention was for that to be Carver. Yes. Because played Carver by. The one play, played by. <laughs> played by Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. For like two You've, seconds. <laughs> for two seconds. You've seen Deadpool 2, right? Yes, I've seen Deadpool 2. You remember the X, uh, the X Factor scene where Deadpool's getting together all of his people? Yes. Like he has all these people and they all die. Except yep. for the. Uh, the who's the, bla ba the bad luck? No, the good luck lady, actually. Oh, uh, Domino? She Domino, yeah, Domino. The invisible guy who comes into the parachute with the, uh, he, he, he's on a, it's invisible guy, parachute comes down, gets electrified. Yeah. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming Brad Pitt was in a movie, Ryan Reynolds was in a movie, and they said, hey, buddy, do you want to do this thing? Do you want to come in? It's not a big role. You'll be in for like <laughs> literally four seconds. For four seconds and die, or two seconds and look smug. <laughs> You'll have zero lines. And so it was originally supposed to be Carver on the train, which is why he was hired yeah, to go pick up the case. So Car Carver, because Carver was the one. <laughs> but yeah, Carver called out sick that day. And he had to, uh, it's a Ladybug took his place. Because Ladybug's whole character is that he's in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah. He's incredibly is how I would describe unlucky. <laughs> But he's not unlucky to a... He's only unlucky to a degree that's kind of annoying. Yes. Or it's, he's unlucky to a degree that technically solves the problem at hand. Yeah. because He is novel, unlucky. He's, he's never... It's never, like, detrimental to his life. It's yeah. It's always just vaguely annoying. <laughs> vaguely annoying. It's it's like the universe or fate. Because this whole movie is about fate and luck. Like, they, they like very they wear that on their sleeve. Like, it's not a deep meaning. It's very much, this is what the movie is about. And that's fine. Like, they're just saying, this is our theme. Yeah. And it's very much about fate being in control. Or rather, your relationship with fate. Because the White Death's whole thing is he's trying to control fate. That's what the, the father of... What was his name again? Oh, Kimura? Kimura's oh, father. father. Oh, Oh, the the elder. I don't know his actual. Yeah, the elder. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's another character, the elder, who used to be, who used to work for the Japanese mob boss that the White Death killed, and so his motivation is to kill the White Death because the White Death killed his mob boss. Yeah. And his and, is the and son. His wife. That's, and his wife. Oh yeah, his wife yeah. too. Uh, that's probably the bigger one. <laughs> and 
So like all these people are just on this train and then basically the whole movie is just them just like trying to kill each other or get the, the suitcase. Yeah. And the prince, who in the end is revealed to be the daughter or the son in the book it, yeah. of the White Death, is just there to basically disrupt all of this and yeah. plant ways to kill her dad. Yeah. Which She's technically dead. works at the end. It, it works out in the end. Yeah. And fun and funnily enough, they had I they did that more to give her a reason to exist. Uh -huh. Not that not necessarily that, because the prince has no relation to anyone in the book. Mm -hmm. He's just there because he wants to kill Minigishi because Minigishi treated him like a child. And Minigishi is the guy that the... the White Death killed in the flashback. The Japanese Oh, okay, okay. Yes, 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 yes. I've noticed that in, in a a good book to movie adaptation kind of solves the problems that the book may not have addressed. Because, you know, uh, uh, J. Michael Straczynski, the guy that made Babylon 5, he has a quote, or it's not like a profound quote, but he says, a book is a book and a movie is a movie. They play by different rules. Yes. And so what may work in a book, because I feel like in books you can be a lot more happenstance or life can, more random incidences of life feel a bit more acceptable in a book than in a movie yeah. a movie it feels like well why are they there why are they there like because they just are doesn't play as well in a movie in a movie sense at least that's how it feels it's also an issue and, for the end of the book in that regard because when you're adapting something like this i don't mm -hmm. know if you want me to spoil the end of the book because i actually yeah go ahead in this book the end of the book is nothing because they just pull to the end of the station and then the hornet kills minigishi off panel and then they leave because a bunch of other stuff happens, but it's like very calm. Things happen off off screen, uh -huh. and that's it. And that doesn't. Yeah, really that would not have the... been no, not satisfying as, from a, in that, a movie. Standpoint. That doesn't work in a movie sense. Well, it's like uh, Fight Club. Speaking of another Brad Pitt movie, uh, do I, I can do you care spoiler for the end of Fight Club? Or no, you've read book. Fight Club. That's right. Yeah, I read the book. <laughs> in the book, I hated it too. <laughs> he's just in like, the whole book or the ending. The whole the ending. The I don't ending? like the whole book. I don't like the, the. I don't like how cynical it is. It's so funny how that uh, mini concession confessions about uh, Fight Club. It's funny that in that movie versus that book, in the book it just reads like a cynical, petulant man child the whole time. Like I don't like the world. Capitalism is stupid. Yeah. Uh, be an alpha male, and then. I don't dislike the book that much. I just find that it can be a bit, you know, much. It's, it can be a bit it's whiny. Draining. It's yeah. draining to read. <laughs> but in the movie, it's funny. Every all and they're the same lines. They're the exact same lines in the book and the movie. They, but then yeah. said by Edward Norton and Brad Pitt, somehow it's kind of like cheeky and funny. It makes it a lot more like, haha, wink, wink, kind of funny. Yeah, dialogue. exactly. Yeah. And they and they cut out the weird stuff as well, like the bus scene that doesn't need to. Yeah. Be yeah. There's just. Well, it's another, again, another uh, thing that can you can translate from book to movie is you can take all the stuff that works and all the stuff that's mostly important and then kind of translate that into a to a, a movie. It does lose, I know f it, for a lot of people, it loses like a kind of a world or an atmosphere because yeah. in the book it feels more like an actual place. There's more converse, side conversations and people and all that stuff, but well, a movie kind of distills kind of thing and... With, yeah. When you're yeah. when you're moving, because it I'll do more more book. Everyone in the book has a has a quirk. Mm -hmm. spe spe uh, specific, uh, kill me. The specific example <laughs> would be, um, you know how Lemon loves Thomas the Tank Engine. That was hilarious. That's his entire character. He loves Thomas the Tank Engine. And I love that he corrects people that say Thomas the Train. It's Thomas yeah. the Tank Engine. It's God Thomas damn it. The tank engine. But that's his character, and he also, uh -huh. that that evolves into him loving Train, so he knows everything about every bit of Train that ever happens, uh -huh. the entire book. Uh, Tangerine, because it wouldn't fit as well, I'm assuming, loves fiction novels, constantly quotes fiction novels, constantly tells Lemon that he should be reading books and stop watching kids' TV shows, back and forth dialogue kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, Kimura is a drunk, like a big alcoholic, like hard alcohol. They dressed him like a typical... Like, I'm surprised they didn't do more with that because they kind of presented that character like he could be. Yeah. And then they have um, the prince. And then Lady Ladybug is 
unlucky, and the prince is very lucky. They touch on that a little bit, but that is literally oh. the dichotomy. The prince is incredibly they... lucky the entire time. Yeah, they don't really touch on that much, do they? Like, they kind of talk about it. She says, I'm very lucky. Yeah. But other they... than that, and then some things kind of work out, like, oh, t Lemon shows up just in time to kind of diffuse no sorry brad pitt's character shows up just in time to diffuse the lemon and her situation like yeah. she's that she's that kind of lucky but then because they, they hammer they it home the, as much like, as ladybug yeah they don't have it as much because they have the little things like lemon drinking the sleeping the sleep drug oil. yeah that's like yes that happened but that's also her luck ah kind of thing mm. they Brought also you by fiji all over the place they um they also touch on that lightly in the movie with the um suitcase where she's like just try all the combinations try the low ones first because that's actually a luck thing where she's like oh yeah it'll be a low number just go ahead mm -hmm. they, yeah that's also in the movie as well <laughs> so i'm putting my head in my hands because i'm remembering the scene where they try to dupe so the, the the white death wants lemon and tangerine to make an appearance with the suitcase to prove that they actually have it and so he sends goons out to check and brad pitt shows up as tangerine because tangerine's indisposed i forget why he's he's, he's searching the train for yeah he's just away yeah. and and so it's him and brad pitt and he's like the uh, brad pitt's proving that they have the case and they haven't looked in it and so he swipes the numbers and it just hap it's a fake case because yeah. they don't have the case and he just swipes the numbers and it happens to open up and just a bunch of like bras and knickers just pull out <laughs> just plop out because he's so unlucky but yet <laughs> if that didn't happen the rest of the movie couldn't happen yeah that that scene is also directly from the book where he's just like... Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. It just shows how unlucky he is constantly. Mm-hmm. There's a good he's scene like, from know, the book. I know, I know. I have this bad luck thing. Oh, that's what you call it. Bad luck thing. Bad Sorry, go ahead. There's a good scene from the book that really shows that where they're near the end of the train line. Just keep referencing the book. Um, and he's going to get off the train. He has the prince with him. And he's like, I'm going to leave the train. And the other guy's like, oh, I need you. It's like, you should give me your phone. Because he's trying to hawk the prince off on another guy on the train. He's like, you uh -huh. should give me your phone number. So that way we can, I can keep in contact in case something happens. Okay, I'll get my phone. So he gets his phone out. He throws his phone into the luggage compartment. So then he has to go down there while the door is open. And he goes down there and he stands up and he bashes his head. And he drops the phone again. And it's just long enough for the doors to close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's... That would have been. I could see. I could see that happening. Yeah. I could see that happen. That, I think that could have been fit into the movie. Yeah. That's funny. There's yeah. His his look is terrible, but like in the in the way that suits it. Because what what's the story like? The ladybug carries the seven sins of the world or something like that to, yeah. to bring the bed. Like I love when the elders explaining this to him what it means uh, in symbolism, and he's like, I don't want to carry the seven sins of the world. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. <laughs> And Brad Pitt's, like, bummed that he has to be a bad luck guy. Yeah. <laughs> so he's getting his orders. So, I, And correct me if I'm wrong on this, but just so I understand. He's getting... Uh, Brad Pitt's character works for an agency with yep. a disembodied voice who ends up being Sandra Bullock. Yes. And I'm assuming that's just some separate task agency. It's ba They're all, like, criminal underworld people kind of mm -hmm. thing. You have people that give out contracts. You have people that do the contracts and then you have in-betweens and handlers and Brad Pitt's character just happens to work with a handler. Okay. Cause I was surprised that, and this is not a bad thing. I just, it, now thinking back on it, that Sandra Bullock's character had almost nothing to do with the entire situation other than simply just ha handling the situation. Yeah. Existing and being like, okay, you have to go here at this time and this time. And with everything else being connected, I'm, honestly surprised they didn't try to find a way to rope her character in there kind of right. near the end too i'm kind of glad they didn't because that might have been a bit too much but she feels the most separate she she's i think the most separate main character main character yeah main cast of the entire everyone is tied in and then and, and here's sandra bullock just kind of like scooching on the sidelines it's like yeah. barely connected to and she's kind of written thing. that way in the book too yeah okay yeah. that makes sense then just a handler yeah. that's hanging out I didn't. I did not guess it was her, based the on her voice. Cause I, gosh, I don't know when the last time I've seen Sandra Bullock in a movie. So, right. Also, she's usually in like she's usually a bit more expressive, and she was very monotone. She yeah, she was very calm. Her, I actually was surprised how 
low in both actual pitch and tone she was. She was very calm, very, she spoke down here the whole time. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't recognize her. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of, it's also funny when you, when you separate someone's voice from their face, you almost hear it differently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember Over the Hedge? Yes. <laughs> William so. Shatner. Obviously, William Shatner is the dad possum, but her, his daughter possum is Hillary Duff, right? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> and I remember like listening to her, and they're like, oh, and Hillary Duff is the daughter. I was like, that does not sound like her at all. Like, when, when you remove the voice from the face, it just seems like it takes on a whole different... It's you hard just hear to, it completely different. It's hard to fit that voice with Lizzie McGuire kind of thing. With the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Sandra Bullock's voice kind of did the same thing. What? Yeah. And then the only other character was the wolf. And the wolf... The wolf! I knew we were forgetting somebody. <laughs> ah, gosh, yeah. He, that poor guy. He was wrong. He was bad luck. Well, granted, bad luck probably by his fault. Yeah. That man was a ruthless man. And he... That's the same as the book. It's a completely different character because everyone's Japanese in the Japanese novel. How did you guess? Oh. Everyone's Japanese in the book. Everyone's Japanese in the book. Yeah. Huh. But the wolf is the same level of, like, shows up and then dies. And that's his character. <laughs> that's drastically different because, I mean, Mexico and Japan are pretty darn different as far mm -hmm. as just even... So it's funny because the wolf, that felt... It, it, didn't, it didn't feel like it was a change. You know what I mean? Like, you can kind of see right. when someone's, like, kind of changing something to fit something else. Like, that, that story it, fit perfectly it in perfectly the cartel. In. And because yeah. in the book, he's... um. The reason he's called the wolf is because he only takes jobs that are related to little kids and pets. Oh. So he's hmm. the wolf. Brought to you by Corona Extra. There's that 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 great <laughs> shot of his boss and like zooms in on him and he's got like you know, he's like this. Yeah. He looks like the Dosakis guy. So they this do that movie, with both of those. they have the, the Corona shot, and then they have the entire scene of Fiji being shoved the Fiji in the water. <laughs> it's like, did you know that this was Fiji water that he drank? Fiji water, it's Fiji water, Corona Extra, and Audi were the the major ones because they're yeah. her car at the end where he goes, nice car, and then yeah, the telephone pole crashes. Yeah, it was an Audi, which I'm okay with because I like Audis. So yeah, good. Now his story was that he as a Car, I'm assuming cartel gangster. Yeah. From the and he rose, rose to the ranks, kind of like an assassin, and he killed tons of people, and then fell in love and got married. And the caterer or the cake maker at the event was the hornet. Yeah. And is that just another instance of he was a bad guy that just happened to get killed, or was he related to anything else? He wasn't related to anything else. He's just a bad guy that happened to get killed. Okay, and, and that's plausible because he, I mean, he's in the criminal underworld and he's he's an assassin more or less, he, or he kills people, so tons of people want him dead. And if and you want so to she, fit into the whole fate mentality, go ahead, actually, you do your thing first. Oh, no, no, go I'm actually curious to sit, go ahead. Because if you want to fit into the whole fate mentality that they're trying to do with the whole thing, Brad Pitt was the, or Ladybug was a waiter. Oh, yeah. Who, who bumped wine into him, which is the mm -hmm. only reason why he didn't get poisoned, which is the only mm -hmm. reason why he showed up to block Brad Pitt from getting off the train. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a very, <laughs> fate had the long plan. <laughs> it's like, wait, we gotta set this up for a while back. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. He he bumps into him and he gets the red. So then it kind of he he really does just like come straight from that event all the way over to Japan because he's still wearing the the same. Uh, well, he he probably changes or whatever and gets all mad, but he he finds out who yeah, and he so he hears that it's the Hornet. That kills, right? So he is after the Hornet, and he just thinks yeah. that Brad Pitt's the Hornet. No, he. I'm I'm sure the reason, the. I'm sure the reason for the movie is just that he spilled wine on him, and that's the only reason he's attacking him. That would make the sense. Because the reason for the book is that the Hornet or the Wolf was doing something to a kid who couldn't defend themselves, and now like, punches him and knocks out his teeth, and he's mad about it. Mm -hmm. is, is the reason he attacks him so the uh hornet in the book lady or uh male or female yes it's two people oh there's there's two yeah. the two people are the hornet it sets it up in the first book there's two people 
there's a girl named Black who wears yellow, and there's a guy named Yellow who wears black. And this they... is an excruciatingly Japanese novel. Go ahead. <laughs> it's very Japanese. And in the first novel, they kill a different guy. And then in this novel, they're like, six years ago, the Hornet killed that guy, and they haven't been seen at all since then. And then they show up in, on the train. And it's oh. the it's the ticket... I think it's the ticketeer and the porter. Oh, okay. And yeah, now okay, does... real quick. Yeah, go. Is that the guy from Heroes? Yes, that was, was the, like guy the guy from, from Heroes. Okay, okay. Yes, that was Hero. Hero, yes. Hero from Heroes. Go ahead, sorry, I just had to ask, because I was... It looked, yeah. That's gotta be him. But yeah, and Nanao kills the... Or Ladybug kills the female one. And then because there's two of them, he's, the male still manages to kill... Minigishi, the yeah. guy at the end. Okay, okay, that makes sense. The uh, I was just—it's remarkable how little screen time the Hornet gets for being talked about so much. It's like one fight and she's done. It's the exact but, same for the book. They show up in that one fight <laughs> scene. That I was the uh, the the Hornet operates through venom. Yeah, the venom of a snake. Right. The I forget what the snake's called. The boom slang. The boom slang, which is also set up in the very beginning, because the on the TV, the, the TV yeah. The, yeah, the hospital, he's they're talking about the boom fang's been stolen from the zoo, and so she uses and it's it's like a coagulates your blood and it makes you bleed from the eyes. It's a very and like vomit blood. It's a very gruesome way to die. Yeah, the hornet seems very fond of it, and <laughs> so there's a fight between Brad, the ladybug, Brad Pitt's character, and the hornet where they're kind of fighting around the the stinger as it were the venom that's in this little syringe and he gets she drops the the, the stinger and it falls into his hand but the the what's it called the the push there's, there's a name for the thing that pushed down there's a name for that but whatever whatever that is i want, I want to say plunger but it's not right <laughs> isn't it though it might actually be the plunger eh. anyway um so that doesn't get pushed down so he's like they like panic for a second and then he like puts it in her neck he like, takes it out of his hand and puts it in her neck, and then she, like, 30 seconds to, to the poison activates, or the venom activates. And then she, like, pulls out her antidote, and he just takes it and in, injects himself with it. Which then, of course, later, when he's attacked by the boom fang, or boom sling, <laughs> is, like, saves his life then, because he already has the anti-venom in him. You know, it's kind of odd, but I already had a case shot of anti-venom, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, then as she's dying, he's like, can I get you anything? Some water? You want me to hold your hand? <laughs> he's such he's a like, charismatic, fun character. He is, and movie. he's going through his own, like, his acceptance of, of himself. Like, he's gone to therapy, and he's, like, learning all these, uh, phrases for life to kind of mitigate his anger. Apparently, it seems like he had some kind of anger issue before, yeah. because, what was it, he's... He swears at someone or gets really pissed at somebody. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, that's the old me. Oh, it's the, yeah, the lady in the quiet car. That that's right, the lady in the quiet car that keeps shushing. <laughs> when they're fighting in the quiet car. And he, like, yeah, him and Tangerine shh. are having, shh, him and Tangerine are having a big old fight and then in the quiet car and keeps getting shushed <laughs> by an old lady. For some reason, there's moments in this movie that give me a little bit of um, Hot Fuzz vibes. Yeah, I could see that with the... Those moments of absurdity, or that specific brand of absurdity, is a little askew to, a little, little similar to they have the, the Hot Fuzz. The um, compilation of all 17 people Lemon and Tangerine killed in the warehouse. Oh, that was good! Let's talk about that. That was, a, I thought that was one of the most clever ways to do exposition. Yeah. Because they, and it's barely even exposition, it's just a fun scene. Yeah. Because Lemon and Tangerine are arguing over how many people they killed in a job to, to, to get the sun. To get, to the, get the, sun. the sun, yeah. And as you, the audience, are watching the fight scene happen, they're looking to the camera and counting the people they've killed and also having this weird kind of conversation. Like, their present self is talking to each other in the past where they're talking about, oh, don't forget this guy, and then that guy shows up. Yeah. And don't forget the one innocent bystander. Are you okay? Boom. Because to spoil more of the novel, if you want, mm -hmm. Lemon and Tangerine both die in the novel and don't get back, don't come back. Oh, okay, so they both die in the book. Yeah, and they yeah. um, they have it as because they have he has a Lemon has like a supermarket um, 
raffle thing to be like, you uh-huh. could win a vacation. And he's like, I'm going to go win that vacation because uh, they didn't put his expiri- expiration date on it. Ho, ho. And he gives it to the na- uh, Ladybug at one point. And so the epilogue to the book is Ladybug going to the store. is like, yeah, I'll try it. I'll turn it in. And he oh. doesn't win the vacation, but he wins a bunch of tangerines and lemons. <laughs> <sighs> This movie does a lot of, I, I wouldn't call it necessarily setups and payoffs. It does a lot of setups and payoffs, but it also keeps motifs running through or yeah. referential actions. I don't even know what to call them. Like where, you know, Tangerine gets killed indirectly by the prince screaming and saying, Help, stop him, stop him, and Tangerine dies. And then since it's the prince's fault, Lemon kills the prince with a Tangerine truck. So whatever you would call yeah. that kind of reference that kind of and level, yeah 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 even the way they die i use quotations with die for lemon because lemon gets back up again yeah. the way they die is even broadcasted earlier in a conversation between lemon and tangerine because lemon no, so tangerine says lemon are you wearing that bulletproof vest and he says yeah. no because i figured it'd be my luck that i would just get in the sh- shot in the neck if i had a bulletproof vest on and then so tangerine who wears a bulletproof vest gets shot in the neck and lemon who said he wasn't going to wear a bulletproof vest gets shot in the chest a bunch of times so it's like they they swapped what they and yeah they swapped what they were saying and if it wasn't for the bulletproof vest that lemon ends up actually wearing he would have died that way but the movie's full of that it's a yeah it's a good Chekhov's gun kind of thing where they just set that up yes there And (laughs) and it's not in your face it's just a light conversation yeah, no, just it's just, it just goes by. And then you're like, oh, wait a second. Chekhov is just watching this movie going, yes! <laughs> My prophecies are all coming true. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to, I think that's the only, there's, like, there's a bunch of them, gosh, there's a ton of them. Um, but I think that was the one that kind of stood up me the most as being the most subtle. Yeah, that's the most was subtle of that kind of them, inter- them call back they, thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think if I were to watch this movie a second time, I would probably see more of them. This this movie feels like something, the more you watch it, the more you see like this little thing or that little thing is, is a reference or a crossover or a setup or whatever. It shows up they, later again. And they show, they do telegraph everything that ever comes up or happens constantly. Because mm-hmm. they have, um, Ladybug's phones keep getting broken, so he keeps getting new That's, phones. And keeps getting <laughs> I like other. that. I don't know why I thought that was funny. He has to keep finding new phones to call Sandra Bullock. But they have um, the prince walking by, and she just tosses Kimimur's phone onto the ground, and it's there near the end of the film. Yeah. So that way uh, the elder calls Ladybug for that to do that, so that's set up. They just mm-hmm. show everything constantly. Her yeah. showing up to her brother's corpse and spitting on the face and you don't really mm-hmm. know why and then later they explain it mm-hmm. they show everything which is nice yeah For the the brother looked i don't think it is but it looked a lot like jared leto he did have a yeah he did have a jared leto face he even had crappy not. tattoos <laughs> it should have damaged across his forehead <laughs> it really sells him as a as a cool and character a, when you write damage on your face phone. over here <laughs> just a tattoo that says it's Morbin time on the right side of his face. <laughs> your, your son's really shitty. Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> I, so the movie... Oh, we never finished the Fight Club analogy, or the Fight Club oh. comparison. So what I was going to mention is that with Fight Club, the book versus the movie ending, right? Yeah. The book ending of Fight Club, he ends up in an insane asylum he, where yes. he thinks is heaven and because he, he remarks how weird it is that God has diplomas on his wall which is just yeah. the psych doctor yes. whereas the, the movie ends in this big spectacle of all the credit card buildings getting blown up and him holding um, the hands with uh, Mar- Marla? Marla 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 yeah with yeah. Marla as yeah because it has him killing Tyler Durden and yeah, him just standing there. Versus in the book, he kills Tyler Durden, but he thinks he's dead. Yeah, and it then gets he keeps having, And they have like a little extra bit where people are like, "We can't wait to see you, Ty- Mr. Durden." Yes, that's right. Because the the staff in the facility are like, "Mr. Durden, you know, we want you back, Tyler, Mr. Durden." Yeah. Uh, and so similarly with this movie, from what you're telling me, the book ends on a bit more of a quiet note, whereas this one, being a screen adaptation, 
needs some explosions and it some needs green something screen. Something more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the 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 book is it's a very Japanese book. It's great, but it's very like thing happens quietly happens things happen mm -hmm. off screen. Oh, it's beautiful, but it's not a movie. You kind of need that. No. Last you need to change it up. Fight scene. Yeah. And then them ramming into a brick wall and just killing countless people. I was wondering about that when they fly when into they, a town. How many more flip, people act? Yeah. They flip another train off the track. They fly down into a suburb in Kyoto and just destroy ta houses. It's these historic houses. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, there, there's <laughs> explosions. Explosions galore. Which, but what's good, though, is it, it was fitting for a movie. I noticed yeah. that... So that's, I think, the only... That and the the the, the point of no return or the, the lowest point in the movie. Because usually in a movie, like, you, get, you have the traditional uh, story beats right before, like, the big climactic ending, you have the lowest point, right? Where things seem the darkest. And that is where Lemon's dead. No, sorry, Tangerine's dead. Everyone's kind of all bummed. The White Death is going to be there. They're like, how are we going to get out? And that's when the Elder kind of talks his story. And then they kind of get that momentum going back up. And then they kind of crescendo back into the ending point. You know, very basic storytelling in, in, in movies. The, th the three-act structure, yeah. Exactly. But what they don't do, which I thought was interesting, that you see in most movies these days that are of this production value and action marvel movies do it dc movies superhero movies do it indiana jones did it where the movie opens on action some yeah. some scenes going on some they're doing a job or the avengers show up or well in the event age of ultron is when they're getting getting the staff back from you know, loki staff yeah. from the hydra base it opens on action a this movie action doesn't doing a thing yeah. yeah and then once that ends then they kind of start the plot more or yeah. less They've set up a few things, and then the plot really starts after the first action beat. Yeah. Uh, this movie doesn't really do that. They just kind of they kind of roll you in. They introduce yeah. Ladybug, and then they just start going. It's time for the movie now, I guess. Like it starts in a hospital, and then it kind of slowly ramps up a little, mm -hmm. where you're just getting mm -hmm. people introduced, and it's very light, and slow, and nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they start ramping it up further in. The wolf is the yeah. starting point, where they're like, "Here's some action, go." I think he is technically the first fight scene, is it, isn't he? Yeah, because he's the knife, the knife fight with the the knife yeah. fight with the briefcase. Yeah, obviously, now that I know that the John Wicks folk did this, it makes sense why the action is so fun and snappy. Yeah. And why it works and kind of flows really well. Yeah, and it's I, what I like about Brad Pitt's character being just a uh, snatch-and-grab guy is that he's not really, like, an amazing fighter. He's just... Yeah lucky but he also like he has a he just fights with whatever's around him and he's less about like killing the other person and more of trying not to get killed yes and i find that he like that's kind of his fighting style which fits his character quite well i feel like it's everyone's very, fighting styles yeah. fit pretty well yeah they all fit they all feel like unique individuals for that mm -hmm. sort of and they're all that's all similar enough like the only thing they didn't do with Brad Pitt's character is in the movie or in the book. He knows uh, like how to break a neck. That's the oh. only extra thing. That's, yeah, that's his defense. Is he knows how to break a neck? And that would almost, with the way they did his character, almost be too violent for him for this iteration yeah. of this character because he's. But it was uh, funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure in the book, like that character could break someone's neck, but in yeah. this one, Brad Pitt doesn't really like his character, Ladybug. Even with the name Ladybug, it doesn't feel like he would go and snap someone's neck. Like if it yeah. feels like he would stop you, or maybe have to shove you out of a train. But like the act of like <laughs> zotting somebody would uh, yeah. be a bit beyond uh, his that, character. Brad Pitt's character for that yeah. because he's trying. He's also trying to be reformed. Between us, there's especially a wall. with the reformed thing. Exactly. Yeah. This wall. There's a there's a window in the wall. No, it's a door. Crap. When you point a finger at someone, you point four the fingers. Three back fingers at you. back at you. Three. Three fingers. <laughs> now, the movie was also, it was funny. I like that it was lightly funny and not, like, comedy levels. Yeah. It was for sure funny, but it wasn't, like, I didn't feel like it ever overstayed its welcome with, with uh, comedic timing. Yeah, the only the thing that I, yeah, like, I think the only time I felt like it was ever really out of place was probably the Fiji montage. I didn't yeah. feel like we needed to see the Fiji bottle going through it's life from a vending machine to 
on the train. Thrown into his face. Yeah, like I think the just because I mean we've seen the Fiji bottle enough in the movie already through the the drinking and like it just being there and always in the foreground that if it had slid down the train we didn't cut to the vending machine montage and just pop up into the guy's hand it would have just been it would have been fine like yeah. we already know the Fiji bottle enough to get the reference going he's using that yeah. bottle it it be it be what I think a lot of harsher critics would be like they respect your intelligence like you don't need it shoved in your face it, yeah that it's the yeah. same Fiji bottle you already know that I'll but, tell you one thing, talking, as you said, respecting the audience, it respected the hell out of your ability to follow what's going on without much information. Yeah. Like, they just kind of said, if you don't understand it, that's not on us. We're not going to... There's, there's a video, and it's this guy, uh, I think it's Man Carrying Things, has a funny video about how every single multiverse movie, they have to re-explain the multiverse again. And we're like, guys, I get it. Two spaghetti strands or whatever, like, you know, like... Yeah. Two timelines branching off. Like, we've seen this a million times by this point. You don't have to explain it. Right. And they didn't do that. They didn't sit you down. They, which is funny because the movie's filled with exposition. Backstory. Yeah, there's a lot of exposition and backstory. But they don't but, hold your hand and walk you yeah, through the story. They tell and you then, just enough and then kind and of then when they get to the ending the end. point. Yeah. It's like they give you enough for you to follow the plot, and then at the end when mm-hmm. you're like, okay, but why is everyone here? They go, this is why everyone was here. Yeah, they it's very... didn't tell you. It makes me wonder if the guy read, whoever the author is that read the, who, who wrote these novels, is a fan of Agatha Christie, who wrote the Poirot series. <laughs> because it's, it's a very Poirot-esque type of thing, where you, it is. in yeah. Poirot, you almost know who the killer is, like, a million times. Like, oh, is it him? Oh, it's, oh, no, something happened. And then they, like, change trajectory. Like, why would this happen? Why would this happen? Why would this happen? And then Poirot, at the very end, comes in and says, he uses his little glaze sails. And then basically tell, plays what the White Death it, does. and The White Death you. does. And expo- it was you, was it not? Yeah, and he, he yeah. explains everything beat by beat and even does some like misdirection. So it felt kind of like Murder on the Orient Express, but Murder on the Bullet Train Express. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is the second book in his trilogy that he's written. He hasn't written the mm-hmm. third one yet, as far as I'm aware. The first one also feels like that, but it also feels like the first novel was written in 2003. And this was written oh. in 2015. So there is mm. a big gap in improvement overall oh, between those okay. two novels. I love the first one. It's just not as refined and like polished. I was about to ask why you think that they used his second book and not his first book. But after you said that, it makes sense. First off, it's recent enough. Yeah. Um, still in print. I'm not sure if the other one's still in print. Probably, but... Uh, it's in fresh into enough people's minds, maybe at least in Japan. But also, if he did get way better between the first and the second one, if it felt like more of a complete story, it would make sense. This also would probably be cheaper on set because you have the train, and that's all you really mm-hmm. need to film in. Whereas the mm-hmm. first novel, it takes place in Tokyo as a whole. Oh, that would be more expensive. Yeah, way easier to, to, to make a few train car sets, put some blue screens behind them, and then just do that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Also, so who would, is Ladybug the, technically the protagonist of the book too? He would be the closest to a protagonist. I think he's okay. introduced second, but he's the one that lives through the story. <laughs> if he lives through this one, he's probably the protagonist. Uh, like he's, and so he's the not intru- he's not introduced first, but he's in the epilogue. So it's like, yeah, he'd be the protagonist. <laughs> and in the first book. Is there a protagonist, or is it more of an ensemble? Or that's also more of an ensemble, but there is a pr- the same kind of the second character that get, or the first character that gets introduced is the main character. Mm-hmm. But there are like four people that you're following through the whole book okay. again. He maybe this one has a bit. That. Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, maybe this, maybe his uh, bullet train, the second book has a bit more a of an empathetic main character. And B has more of a main character. I'm just guessing because I haven't read the yeah. books, but if I were to throw out a random guess yeah. based on why they would pick a second mo- second book versus the first book. Right. And I was looking and they don't have a... There's not a lot of adaptations of anything he's made. This is the only mm-hmm. movie one. And I think they're doing like a Netflix film for a different novel he's made at one point. Oh, okay. It's a side one that I didn't... I have to look through these. Because there's only... Only like three of his books are translated in English as far as I can oh, tell. Okay. So... <laughs> It's a shame. It's annoying. It's a really good author. Yeah. I like him. Well, hopefully, well, every time, um, anytime an author gets a movie made, 
it's everything that they did gets kind of put on blast. So hopefully bullet train coming out will mean that a, he has more motivation to write more because it'll pick up traction a bit easier and B the stuff that's not translated into English may get some adaptations based on, you know, from the author that brought you bullet train or whatever. Right. Be a little bit more publication for people to go. Ooh. Yeah. Do you have anything Hopefully. left on your little list of things that you wanted to mention at all? I think I hit all of the major points that I wrote down that were actually pertinent differences. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I don't think, I can't think of anything else from my end. If I were to, this isn't uncorked, so I'm not going to rate it, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. I thought it was fun, uh, very unlike most of what's going around right now. Yeah, it's a very nice. fun to watch film. There's not, there's not a lot of downtime. It feels like it's, it almost feels like. The pace light. is fast, yeah. Yeah. And it's not one of those films where you're sitting and watching something for ages. It kind of feels like it's the right amount of time for you to... You're so right with that. It was so close to being too long. Yeah. But it never hit that. Just I feel like the exposition, there was so much of it, it almost became tedious. And then there was the movie was almost too long. But then it ended at just the right time. Like, they knew how to do just enough exposition. And they knew how to ju where just to end it. And I think it, was, it nailed both of them, both of those points pretty well with not overstaying their welcome. And it's different. It's not a property that anyone has to watch four TV shows, eight TV shows, 12 TV yeah. shows. And the list ever <laughs> keeps growing bigger and bigger. And you don't need it for, you don't need, you don't need to read the book for the context. They rewrote it to work in a movie setting and it's great. Yeah. If you want to read the book, it's also good, but they're different. So. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's as they should be, as they will yeah. should be. Other than that, yeah, I don't know how to end this. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if we remembered how to end the first one. I don't know how we ended the first one. Uh, essentially, yeah, I would, I would give this one a recommendation. If you're okay with, I mean, violence and death, which, I mean, in 2023, who isn't, I guess? You'd assume, yeah. Yeah, most, movie, most moviegoers today, I think, are pretty well desensitized to anything that would happen. There was a couple... So kills like in the uh montage with lemon and tangerine that was like Ew. but like yeah. i mean it's whatever you know there's some you've seen worse in most major blockbusters after a point and yeah it's like, especially it's now a, it's a little violent there's a little swearing it's fine yeah it's about a normal yeah. r-rated film at that point yeah if you're old enough to go see r-rated movies that you should be absolutely fine so i would give this one a pretty good strong rating like i enjoyed it quite yeah. a bit and I would be interested to seeing if they're going to make any more movies off this guy's stuff and what that ends up being like. But yeah, other, all in all, I would consider this a strong recommendation yeah, uh, for me. I know you, you've you seen it five times, so I'm going to assume that you think it's a strong re I, recommendation. I don't recommend it at all. I, it's a terrible <laughs> film. I've watched it five times out of spite. I'm masochistic. I, I didn't watch it in theaters and then wait daily to see when it would get released and then buy it so I could watch it again. <laughs> no. I definitely did not do that. <laughs> Uh, right now it's on, he says on Amazon, it's on Netflix right now. Yep. Uh, Netflix, probably a few places. If you like reading books, you can get it from any bookstore, honestly. It's also, there's an English, uh, there's an English audiobook version on Audible if you want to listen to it. It's about 10 oh, hours, okay. so it's about a normal 400 page novel length, yeah. roughly. Give it 20 corks out of 20, I don't know. <laughs> 37 corks out of 104. <laughs> It's a bit <laughs> that would be pretty bad. That's no, a good movie. Good yeah. Recommendation. God, I really don't know how to end these. No. Um, that's the ending now. That's the ending you now. Yeah. You saying that?